CA here, and we are going to go over something concerning some stuff that my debate opponent, Godless Engineer, mentioned in our debate on the Non Sequitur Show. So, without any wait, let's take a look. So, a while back, I had a debate discussion with atheist YouTuber, Godless Engineer. At some point, he mentioned that me quoting scholars is somehow an appeal to an authority fallacy just because I'm simply citing the scholars. So let's actually see an example of when I did this uh, sort of quote unquote fallacy and then his response in which he makes the accusation. Examining why we can consider this part of the actual passage is that this was a pattern of ancient historiography, especially that uh, containing to Josephus. For example, uh, Dr. Michael Grant, a classicist and author of the books on ancient history, noted in page 53 of the Greek and Roman historians, Information and Misinformation, the following, quote, a further main reason why ancient historiography affirmed from its, uh, differed from its modern counterparts was provided by digressions. They were far more frequent in the Greek and Roman writings than in our own. For one thing, there was a simple technical explanation for such digressions. And here's where it gets interesting. He says, nowadays we have footnotes. The ancients did not. So that what would now be relegated to a footnote or an appendix had to appear in the text. But there was a deeper philosophical explanation the Greek and Roman historians wanted to supply background. So in that book, in that chapter, we see a lot is mentioned about Pilate. And Pilate does get mentioned here. And this isn't the first time that Josephus does this. He does this regarding several other figures um, in his works uh, in book 18 and book 20, for example. Um, I'll pull some examples up later if we do go back down there. But even e Mary Smallwood mentions in her translation of the Jewish Wars on page 2021 20 that one feature of Josephus's writing which may be disconcerting to the modern reader and appear inartistic is the way in which at times the narrative is proceeding at a spanking pace when it is unceremoniously cut short by a paragraph or a longer passage of material unrelated or, or only marginally related to the subject in hand and then resumed equally abruptly. And so she explains the same thing that this is basically as she says, quote, what we relegate to notes and appendixes appeared as digressions. So this simply was just a part of Josephus's ancient uh, writing history. Um, another thing is, is I, I, I really like how Christian anarchists, um, uh, you started out by condemning an argument from authority, but then throughout your entire thing, you seem to use nothing but an argument from authority in order to substantiate the things that you're saying. Um, not that that's really all that different from most historicists, but I just thought that that was a little bit of a, a funny thing that happened there. Now, the problem with this is the definition of the fallacy and that it's not even really being used here. In fact, if we look at the definitions, especially from logicallyfallacious.com, we can clearly see the definition and examples used on the site referring to the following, quote, insisting that a claim is true simply because a valid authority or expert on the issue said it was true without any other supporting evidence offered. An example would be similar to what Inspiring Philosophy used in his debate with Godless Engineer, as well as even James Patrick Holding, otherwise known as Tecton TV, as well as Edasham Ghulam, a Muslim apologist who debates Christians and apparently appeals to the fallacy by saying quite often, quote, well, I have the majority of scholars on my side, or the majority of scholars disagree with you. I didn't do this in my discussion with Godless Engineer. What I'm saying and doing is more than simply just saying the scholars say this, therefore it must be true argument. In fact, there is an exception that is mentioned that I will get to later. I'll leave a few examples of the picture quotes I made for videos in case you need to visually see what I mean. I didn't just say, well, Dr. So-and-so said this, therefore it's true. I didn't do this at all. Instead, what I did was say, this scholar says the following. I read the quote, which can be detailed and show us what exactly the evidence is concerning the quote. And then I expound upon the information that's been provided, which contains the evidence and the information that we can examine for ourselves by taking a look at for example, the Josephus and the Tacitus passages. Either we go into it now, 
or just reveal the information so people watching or our opponents can decide for themselves what to make of the research. So not appealing to the authority fallacy. Another thing to keep in mind is the exception to the rule. Here's why in an explanation of the fallacy versus deferring to authority. Be very careful not to confuse deferring to an authority on the issue with the appeal to authority fallacy. Remember, a fallacy is an error in reasoning. Dismissing the counsel of legitimate experts and authorities turns good skepticism into denialism. The appeal to authority is a fallacy in argumentation, but deferring to an authority is a reliable heuristic that we all use virtually every day on the issues of relatively little importance. There is always a chance that any authority can be wrong. That's why the critical thinker accepts facts provisionally. It is not at all unreasonable, or an error in reasoning, to accept information as provisionally true by credible authorities. Of course, the reasonableness is moderated by the claim being made, i.e. how extraordinary or how important and the authority, how credible, how relevant to the claim. The appeal to authority is more about claims that require evidence than about facts. For example, if your tour guide told you that the Vatican City was founded in February 11th, 1929, and you accept that information as true, you are not committing a fallacy because it is not the context of argumentation, nor are you being unreasonable. So I'm not using an argumentation form in the example of according to person one who is an expert on the issue of why, why is true, therefore why is true. No, I'm instead saying these are the facts about a topic, now let's examine them and follow this to a conclusion that's logical. That's all I'm doing is using data utilized by scholars that they can relate to us and we can use the data then to investigate for ourselves. But what I find interesting is that under this very broad definition of a fallacy, Godless Engineer commits a few times this fallacy by his own very broad standard of the fallacy. For one, he appeals to some Bible translations when he quotes the Bible. Now, I don't know much on Godless, Godless Engineer's education concerning this matter, but based on the name, I assume that concerning the degrees, he has, you know, engineer expertise. Uh, more so. And if I am wrong, you know, he can correct me on this. But I'll assume he doesn't have that much of an exhaustive knowledge on the Koine Greek for the New Testament or the Septuagint. If that's the case, how does he know what it says? Is, is he going to the authority of scholars who know the language and have translated it for him when he cites these English translations or reads English of it? Or is he reading it all in full Koine Greek? Then the same thing goes for lexicons. And then there's also the time he appealed to the Ignatius epistle to the Ephesians that is supposedly some lost gospel. So how did he know uh, what he wrote since it wasn't in English originally? So that means he's appealing to the scholar authority of Alexander Roberts and James Donaldson who have translated the text that he cites because I have seen the video they did of this and that's exactly the translation he used. Then he mentioned the very odd story of Jesus that you may be familiar with if you saw the debate. But how does he know what that says unless he relied on a translator, relied on an authority who knew the language to translate it for him? There are other ways I can point out that he unknowingly appeals to the authority, but I don't think he's committing the fallacy. But rather he's deferring to authorities who are experts and we can trust their knowledge for simply obtaining facts and not trying to use the demonstrate the end of a debate. When we simply argue for the facts, they provide and even use their words, that way we know we aren't pulling this out of our butts or plagiarizing for the most part, we can at least get a starting point to then allow our own reasoning to be used. So ultimately, I fail to see how I was using the appeal to authority fallacy, and if I'm guilty of this, then I have no problem with that because then I see everybody, including Godless Engineer, as being equally guilty. This has been the Christian Anarchist. Have a good day.